Welcome back. It's Janine Driver. This is Celebrity Lie Detector Live, another late, late night show, 3.04 a.m. So we're going to speed through this pretty quickly. I'm so thrilled you're here. If you are here on Facebook Live, probably you are on the West Coast of the United States, certainly not the East Coast, unless you just can't sleep tonight. And here's the deal. We have a lot to cover tonight. If you're going to watch the whole entire segment, it's going to be a couple chunks of material, different parts. And are you in control of your behavior? Power persuasion, meeting with Marissa Mayer, Steve Jobs, Sheryl Sandberg, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, plus more movement pattern analysis. Meet the investigators. Are you an investigator? And forget about the extroverts and introverts. Are you a possible neutral? My name is Janine Driver. I'm the celebrity lie detector. This is live every Wednesday night on Facebook. And sometimes we just get a really late start, and that's one of these nights. Uh, for those of you who are tuning in for the first time here on Facebook, I will play it all in a row. I have three segments for tonight's series. And over on YouTube, I'll be dividing it into a three-part series. So if you're here on YouTube, I'm so thrilled you found us. And if you're here on Facebook or other social media platforms, please be sure to like us and put your comments below. This is a learning channel for me, which means I'll be teaching you as we go and playing some videos a couple times. All right, let's get the party started. Let's do our first segment. The end of the first segment, it's going to look like the whole show is over, but it's not. I have three segments total. Here we go. Are you in control of your behavior and the power of persuasion? My name is Janine Driver. I'm the celebrity lie detector, and we are live on Facebook every Wednesday night. I'm live right now. Here we go. Let's get the party started. Tonight, we're going to be talking about several areas. We'll be diving in on what would you do if there was a bunch of smoke coming under the door and you were in the room? How quickly would it take you to leave the room? Are you in a social bubble or are you being influenced and your decisions being influenced by other human beings? Then the power of the crowd, when you are around a crowd, what is that all about? You may have heard about it a little bit before, but we're going to shed some light on what is really going on with the crowd. Then we're going to look at a couple studies, one involving kids with candy, with this uh, individual, the person in the study saying, kids, you can take one piece of candy. And then the researcher leaves. What do the kids do? And how does their behavior change? by adding one piece of furniture in the room. Is there a change in their results? And the answer is, oh yeah, there's a change. Research has proven that you cannot, you cannot predict with 100% certainty on how you will behave in any situation. You cannot predict it with 100% certainty because you're being influenced right now, tomorrow at work, the next day to act in a certain way because it's connected to how you relate to one another. So your decisions, the way you behave is being influenced by other people. As a matter of fact, we spend approximately 80% of our working hours communicating in one way or another. Research shows that we spend about 30% of our day talking, yes, 30%. This is a picture of me when I was a little baby. I was four months old here and this is my mom. I miss you, mom. And uh, my dad gave me this as a Christmas present this past Christmas. And it's interesting because I always ask my mother to send me gifts. My mother said to me before she passed, she said it her whole life, you never know unless you ask. So I ask a lot and man, she's generous. She sends me gifts all the time. Unexpectedly, dad arrives at Christmas and gave me this picture. I looked at it for a couple of minutes and I, I put it down and I thought that was really sweet that he brought it for me, found it in a drawer. I didn't even ask him to find me a gift. It just came to me and I put it, looked at the picture, put it down and I'll talk about it again in a minute. So yes, 30% of our time is spent talking for me, way more than that, I think. 40, 45% of our time is spent listening. So that, that equals 75%. The other 25% is spent kind of daydreaming and thinking. 45% listening, 30% of our day talking. And uh, back to this picture, 
my dad, I'm not motivated by details. And if you continue to watch here, series number 15, there's three parts. This is part one of three. In the third part of series 15 for Celebrity Lie Detector Live, You'll learn about, are you an investigator? Are you motivated by details to gather the research, to probe and scan? And so we're going to um, chat a little bit about that in segment three. It's going to blow your mind. I am not motivated by details. So when dad handed me this picture, the next day on Christmas day, my dad said, unbelievable what your mother wrote, huh? Years ago on the back of that picture. As you might imagine, I looked at my dad completely confused. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's what your mom wrote on the back of the picture. I responded, Dad, are you joking with me? And he goes, no, go, no, seriously, Janine, go look. I grabbed the picture and had you been there, you would have seen me burst out crying. My mother, what I'm about to show you, my mother had never verbally said this to me my entire life, but here it is on the back of a picture that my dad gives me on Christmas Eve. I don't read the back until Christmas day. I had asked my mother who had passed away of breast cancer five years ago to send me a gift for Christmas. And here's what I got on Christmas Day. Neen. I'm, I was born in June, so this is October 1970. I was a couple months old. Neen. Mom called me Neen. Neen, you need to learn to use the phone because someday you're going to be a motivational speaker and you will influence many others. You are on your way. Love, Mom. Woo! How amazing is that? I've read this a hundred million times. Um, it's hanging on my fridge at home. Thanks mom for the Christmas present. All right, I'm not motivated by details. We'll find out later if you are. How could I miss this? It's right there in front of my face behind the picture and I completely missed it. I, why did I miss it? Because a lot of activity was going on. My dad was visiting from Boston. I live in Virginia. I have three sons and I am being persuaded and influenced by people in the room. And I looked at the picture and I put it away. I didn't spend a lot of time. Here's the deal. Other people in our environment are influencing how we act. Our brain, we have what's called an open loop in our brain and it's waiting to be filled with information from other people. This is like the, the crying baby that can be comforted by their father singing a song or more likely their mother, if we're talking about the superstar, superstar singer, Carrie Underwood. I don't know if you saw this, went crazy viral three weeks ago. This is Carrie Underwood and her husband, the baby, they have a new baby, the baby's crying, the husband's singing a song, singing a song, and the baby is not happy. And then Carrie Underwood, changes everything. That baby is crying and it has an open loop in its brain. It's looking for the influence of somebody else. You'll see mommy, mommy, mommy. And all of a sudden we can comfort the baby. It is part of our primal instincts, this open loop. It, we connect with other human beings. This means your mood is influencing your employees. I'm doing a new keynote on this, on the power of being a powerful leader and change management by understanding the power of your mood. It is the number one skill, number one on increasing your bottom line. Your employees are being affected by your mood. It is contagious. It is literally like electricity going through the wire. It is one of those garden hoses that have all the little holes in it that you have on a timer to water your garden You know, in the morning and the evening. It just automatically happens so you don't have to get focused on it these hoses they make, there's tiny pin, pin size holes. I want you to imagine your mood when it's a good mood, those little teeny pin size holes are filled with super water. It's like miracle grow water. It's like someone took smart water and threw it through your hose. It's nourishing the flowers, they grow, they flourish. Now imagine if you're in a bad mood, instead going through that hose with all those little teeny hose, it's vinegar. How are your flowers gonna blossom? As a matter of fact, your mood is influencing other people's behavior and their ability to solve difficult problems and look for opportunities. It's influencing their pes pessimistic attitude. It's influencing that instead of being optimistic. All right, let's see Carrie Underwood's little baby and what goes down here. Cutie pie. You and me. Girl. 
How funny is that? Pay attention to your mood. A good exercise I do, if I notice I'm in a bad mood, first of all, before I go into any meaning or before I hit the stage, what I ask myself is, would I want to see me as a speaker? Would I want me as a boss today? Would I want to work for someone like me today? And if my answer is no, I wouldn't want to see me as, as a keynote speaker on the stage, or no, I wouldn't want me as a boss today. One of my skills, one of my exercises I do is I go through my cell phone, and I find a picture that truly, truly, or a short video clip that brings me joy. And I'm transcended back into that moment and it changes everything. I, research shows that when you fake happiness, you fake that everything is going well, your employees spot it. It's literally called the CEO disease where you think everyone likes you and you're so positive. If you're not being realistic, you know, if you're not being realistic, then you're coming across as phony. So I'm going to talk about this at another time, but powerful leaders, they soar, S-O-A-R. So how are they soaring, S-O-A-R? In another post, I'll talk about what is S-O-A-R so you can be the best leader possible. Just know your mood is influencing your employees. I'm sure you heard of Saldini, right? This guy, he's this big persuasion guy. He's written several books. He was involved with this one study, numerous studies. And this one particular study, study, which is fascinating, in the national parks, they had a sign in the sign, some of the places, some of the parks had a sign that said, your heritage, quote unquote, your heritage is being vandalized every day by theft losses of petrified wood of 14 tons a year mostly a small piece at a time. Guess what happens? It is, continues to happen. People are continuing to take these small teeny pieces of wood and it's equivalent to 14 tons every year, small piece at a time. So Saldini decided, hey, let's try removing the sign because what's happening is we're being influenced by the sign. So he removes the sign to see, does it make a difference? And lo and behold, it does. It goes down dramatically on how much the wood is being taken. See, visitors were interpreting the sign's message as permission. Hey, someone else did it. Why shouldn't I? You know, everybody's doing it. Everybody's taking a little piece. What's the difference? It's already happening anyway. So people thought it was normal. Take a small piece. We are being influenced by other things. Our environment, like a sign, and the people in our life. There was another study done by a man named Albert Bandura and his colleagues, and they worked with young kids who were afraid of dogs. The study blows my mind. And what they did is they took children and they had children watch a four-year-old little boy play with the dog for 20 minutes. And the little boy was super happy, having fun with the dog, smiling, laughing. And these kids who were terrified of dogs watched the same little boy play for 20 minutes with this dog, having a ball for four days, just four days in a row. Guess what happened at the end of four days? 67, 67% of the children who were terrified of dogs began to play with dogs. And here's the real like mind blowing fact. Months and months later, it's still stuck. These kids were still willing to play with the dog. So we are being influenced by human beings. Here's a study. I wanna talk about the study that was done with regard to uh, smoke. Would you leave a room immediately? Would you leave a minute after, five minutes after, 10 minutes after? How much smoke has to enter, enter the room for A, for you to notice, B, for you to get out of there, or at least to get help? A study was done, and this is a while ago, and so I had to go into the archives to find this baby, but I know you're going to enjoy it, and you're gonna be like, Oh my gosh, you're going to think this woman is stupid. She's only one of many people that, that had this result. Watch the power of being persuaded by other people in the room when they're not taking action. And then we'll go in deeper of what is going on here. 
See, we think that we're in this little bubble and we're simply not. We are being influenced by other human beings. This video does not have sound. So you're gonna see this first part of the video is where they get the baseline. And so they have a, a woman filling out a questionnaire. Smoke comes in, look how quickly she's out of there. She looks around, she stands up, boom. Within what, two seconds, three seconds, goes over to the smoke. And then she goes to ask for help within seconds. Part two of the study is going to be now these seats are gonna be filled in with other people who, as you might imagine, are not going to leave. They're all, of course, part of the study and they're in on it. She even left her bag there. Condition two, this is with people in the room. Now watch what happens here. So we're at 16 seconds in, look at her. I want you to notice the pacifiers. Look, here she touches her hair. These pacifiers increase with stress and anxiety. So it's not that she's not stressed out and it's not that she's not noticing the smoke. She's noticing it and there's a spike in stress and anxiety but she's simply not moving, why? Because this bystander effect, which we'll go into a little bit more because other people are there, another pacifier, look at this. Are you surprised by how easily our surroundings, your surroundings can influence your decisions? Look at this Mac Daddy pacifier. By the way, the higher the pacifier, the more stress and anxiety. There is another pacifier. Now she's taking this exasperation, this big deep breath, her head is up. 20 minutes and 15 seconds, 20 minutes and 15 seconds. How can that happen? It's a concept that's been discussed at length. You've probably heard it before, or seen shows on it. It's called the bystander effect and the diffusion of responsibility. See, when there's other people there, we think someone else will step up. Someone else will do something about it. I remember that I did a program called the Landmark Forum. I love it. I don't push it on people because I don't think it's for everybody. But if anyone ever asked me how I'm successful, I say I'm a Maserati and I was all gassed up and shiny and ready to go, but I didn't have the keys to get out of the driveway. And the Landmark Forum gave me the keys to get out of the driveway. It's a Landmark Forum, L-A-N-D-M-A-R-K, because my Boston accent, I want to make sure I'm saying this and you can hear it, Landmark Forum. I think the website's landmarkforum.com. And the reason I tell you about it is I took this class, I think it was three days. It was like a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then a Tuesday night. And they, uh, they tell you not to go to the bathroom, that if you go to the bathroom, they're kind of passive aggressive about this because they said, if you go to the bathroom, you might miss the most important part of what you're supposed to miss. And so go to the bathroom when they tell you. The only problem is they take breaks like every couple hours or so, or at least they did when I went eight years ago. And I'm not bullied by that. So just because the crowd is sitting still, that doesn't phase me in the least. We'll talk about this part of my profile in another episode of Celebrity Lie Detector Live. My name is Janine Driver. I'm so glad you're here. So for me, when I had to go to the bathroom, I got up. It was about an hour and 10 minutes in. I got up, went to the restroom. Guess what happened? Had you been there, you would have seen that when I got up, about 15 other people, maybe even 16, all got up and there was a line in the bathroom behind me. And women were saying to me, I was like a hero. They're like, thank God you got up. We, I was dying, I had to go to the bathroom, I couldn't wait. Uh, so I was not influenced by people in the room. I tend not to be, I tend to be the person who breaks the rules. Uh, but this concept has been around you know, for a very long time, the bystander effect. In the presence of other people, it influences our behavior. So let me ask you this, how do you see yourself? You know, the way that, that you behave, do you think it can be changed by your environment? I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you a study. One study, researchers answer the doors of different houses on Halloween night. They tell the kids when they answer the door that they could have one piece of candy and then the researcher left the room. How many people do you think took more than one? Write it below here on Facebook or on, on YouTube. 
34% of the children, 34%. So that's what, a third, right? That I could, I could see a third. Took more than one piece of candy. However, when one piece of furniture was added to the room, this number dropped from 34% down to 12% of the kids took the candy. Can you think about what the piece of furniture is that was added to the room that took the kids taking more than one piece of candy from 34% down to 12%? I'm gonna give you a second to write your comment. What was the piece of furniture added to the room that took the kids, 34% of the kids taking more than one piece of candy all the way down to 12% taking more than one piece of candy. What was the piece of furniture? Put your computer on pause, put the show on pause because I'm gonna give the answer. Did you get it right? A mirror, a mirror. When a mirror was added to the room and the kids could see themselves taking the candy out of the bowl, once they could see themselves, that number dropped from 34% to 12% of kids taking more than one piece of candy. It's unbelievable. Now, let's tie it all together. Here's a video I found. I think Prudential put it all together for us. So thank you, big shout out to Prudential, who's a client of mine. And watch this. It, it paints a really clear picture of how we are in being influenced by other people's behavior. And I'm gonna challenge you to say to yourself, how, how am I being influenced by other people's moods today? What is going on for me and what can I do about it? If you're being influenced in a negative way, move your body, move your mind, or do what I do, open up a picture, find something that's positive and be influenced by that. Remember, we're influenced not just by human beings, but we're being influenced by our surroundings. Go for a walk. The color green get, creates this relaxation. The color blue creates creativity and safety. It's expansive. Sit near a fish tank for a little while or go to a restaurant that has a lot of indoor plants or greenery or an outside, outside seating area. Your mood can be changed by the environment, not just the toxic people you might be working with. So let's look at this montage of videos of how we are being persuaded and influenced by the people of, around us, this bystander effect and the diffusion responsibility and the power of influencing our open loop. The gentleman in the elevator now is a candid star. These folks who are entering, the man with a white shirt, the lady with a trench coat, and subsequently one other member of our staff will face the rear. And you'll see how this man in the trench coat <laughs> tries to maintain his individuality but little by little, <laughs> he looks at his watch, but he's really making an excuse for turning just a little bit more <laughs> to the wall. Now we try it once again. Here's the candidate. So here comes the candidate down the staff. We have the feet. And uh, this man has apparently been in group <laughs> with his hat on in the elevator. First, he makes a full turn to the rear and Charlie closes the door. A moment later, we'll open the door. Everybody's changed positions. <laughs> now we'll see if we can use... <laughs> see if we can use group pressure for some good. Now, in a moment, on Charlie's signal, everybody turns forward. <laughs> there is, notice, they take off their hats. <laughs> and now, do you think we could reverse the procedure? Watch. <laughs> How fun is that? Thank you, Prudential, for putting that baby together for us. That was incredibly fun. 
I have some questions coming in on Facebook Live. So I'm going to answer these questions. Uh, is it Raquel Weissendanger? Sorry if I'm, I'm butchering your name there. When Michelle is asking with regard to Carrie Underwood's husband, his name's Mike, when he's over the baby, is the posture of the man influencing the baby's reaction? Possibly, because remember I said our open loop is influenced by other human beings. It's not just their words, it's their mood, it's their behavior, it's everything, it's their body language. I'm glad you're all here, Susan Lewis. I'm so thrilled that you love these posts. I am psyched that you're here. And I love that you're learning so much, especially about yourself. That's awesome. Hey, Betsy, I'm so happy you're here. And, and Karen Dix on the West Coast, big shout out. And Shelly Dalaman. Yeah, it's a late night for me. And on top of it all, I'm speaking at Women in Federal Law Enforcement tomorrow in D.C. Whiffle, it's called. And I think it's a couple thousand people there. And I'm the 8 o'clock speaker. So I have to be there at 7 a.m. for my run through. Hello. I'm going to get two hours sleep. But I love you guys. And uh, I try my best to keep my commitments on Wednesday, even if it's late. So let's recap. My name's Janine Driver. I am the celebrity lie detector. I am live every Wednesday night here on Facebook. What I do is I do three or four part series. This is part one of three this evening. This is segment one of three. So you're more than welcome to find part two and three below. This is episode 15. We just talked about how we're being influenced. Would you walk out of a room with smoke if no one else is walking out? Or how long would it take you to move out? What kind of person are you? We started with talking about, we spend about 80% of our waking hours communicating with one another. And research shows we spend about 30% of our day talking and 45% of our day listening. Yeah, it's true. Research has proven that we cannot, you cannot predict 100% certainty where you're going to, what kind of decisions you're going to make, where you're going to spend your time today. These other people are influencing our environment and how we work. There's this open loop in our brain. That's why we can comfort a baby. We can comfort a baby. So, you know, you have a boss that has a good attitude. You, you're like, we can do it because they believe we can do it. You have a bod that, boss that's negative and pessimistic. You want out of there. You don't even want to go to work. You're, you become pessimistic and negative. My name's Janine Driver. This was Celebrity Lie Detector Live. Segments two and three for episode 15 coming up. For more training on reading and influencing human behavior with me, Janine Driver, take me home. You can take me home and we can work together one-on-one. -on -one. Simply visit bluestreaktraining.com. Check it out. There are different options on how you can take me home. I'm at your beck and call right there on the other end of your phone and at the other end of your computer. And right now, if you get there, my team can give you 80% off the first 10 people after the show airs. We're going to be taking this offer down. I'm not sure when. Uh, I, I'm thinking in August. I'm thinking in August. So there's a team of people that get involved with all the pricing. That's not my thing. I say I'm a show monkey. Check out bluestreaktraining.com if you haven't done it already. My name's Janine Driver. Here comes segment two. Stand by, everybody. <laughs> 